Thanks to a recommendation left by a commenter on one of my videos, ChrisHead2391, thank you very much, I think I might have found a viable software to replace Morphe. Let's check it out. Open up your web browser and go to shaper3d.com, which is shaper3d.com and then you'll want to click over on the right at sign up and create yourself an account. You do have the ability to create like I think one or two projects for free before you'd have to upgrade to a build plan. So I'm evaluating that right now. I'm going to try to build one of my cigar mold templates from scratch and you guys are gonna watch. Then let's download the software. You will click on product, 3D modeling and download Shaper 3D. Choose the platform that you're working on. I'm working on Mac. Save, and then you'll run the installer. Let's skip past that, and I'm gonna launch the app. And what I'm going to do now, I know the basic dimensions of one half of my cigar mold, and we're going to put that down first as lines. So I'm gonna draw right here. So that says 10 inches. I only want it to be five and a half. There we go, that should work. Now, I want to draw another line, starting there. So I've created a rectangular shape with the dimensions that I want. Now I want to do an extrusion to bring it into 3D reality. All right, so I changed to the transform tool and it automatically selected the extruder. See this set of arrows right here? I'm going to pull up and there I'm creating a block. Let's do 0.75, that'll do. So one thing that I really like about this software, when I first set it up, and I didn't walk you through that, it asks you to set up how you want your controls and it allowed me to select trackpad gestures, which is immensely helpful to me because I love being able to do things like when I put my two fingers down, now I can rotate the object. When I hold shift and then move my fingers, now I'm moving around the object. So very easy to manipulate this, kind of like Morphe was. Zoom into it, and I'm using the pinch gesture, pinching out and pinching in to zoom. All right, so what I want to do now, I round my corners. And in order to do that, I went through a tutorial when I first launched the software, by the way, that taught me this. See how I can select the very corner and it selects just that line? Well, what I'm going to do, it didn't teach me this in the tutorial, but I think I can select all four corners and manipulate them at the same time. Watch, I'm gonna select this and see how an arrow appears? What we can do is drag outward to create a rounded corner or drag inward to create just kind of a chopped off corner. I want a rounded corner and I actually want to do all four corners at the same time. So let me see if I can do that. I do believe I can. I'm gonna select that corner and I'm going to rotate around, hold shift, click. Okay, yes, you can see that one selected and that one. And then I'm just gonna keep rotating around until I get all four corners selected, holding shift every time I select. And now this one arrow, if I'm right, should manipulate all four corners. Boom, and it does. So now I'm getting an equal, equal curvature on all four corners. There we go, a rounded corner rectangle. And now I need to do some copying and subtractions to turn this puppy into a cigar mold. So now I have half of my cigar mold and I need to duplicate this puppy so that I have two halves of a cigar mold. See if I can figure that out. I'll want to select the entire thing somehow. Right click, there we go, select all. I wonder what mirror does. Oh, there we go. It looks like mirror is going to create two different pieces. So I'm gonna click done. Now the big question, are these actually independent? Yes, they are. Oh, and look over here. I've got two different objects. So body one, body zero one. I bet I can title those right here. Lower body and upper body. How do I move these independently? So how do I... How do I select that puppy and move it? So probably move, rotate. Let's see if, well, it's not just as simple as click and drag. Okay, so that that allows me to move it in space when I select the move up. I don't want to stretch it. It's gonna take some getting used to these controls, I can tell. Move, rotate. Well, wait a minute, look at that, that's wacky. So that's moving just the face of the object, not the whole object, that's interesting. So I'm gonna do the same thing I did a second ago, 
and do select all, but it selected both of them. I only want to select all of this one object. Now I'm going to have to figure out how to do that. So it looks like what I need to do over here on the side where I have the items that I named, I can select the entire object. And now when I move it, I'm free to move it on any axis with these arrows. So okay, that'll do. Let's say I want these to be both sitting at the same level. I wonder how I do that. Like is there a, there's got to be some way to align. So it looks like what I'm going to do over here in my menu, I'm going to select transform and then align. And then it wants me, I think, to select the object that I want to align with. And I get this green arrow and I'm going to select next. You rotate this around. It's up here it says select face or edge to align, select target face or edge, and drag to snap points. So let's see if I drag you know, the center of this to the center of this. Hmm. I mean, it's not quite what I wanted, but that will do for for what I want to use it for. So I want to click done. Okay, so then now they're in alignment. That's basically two halves of my cigar mold. I need to change the dimensions so that this one is just a little bit shorter. So this one is 0 0.75. I'm going to make this one on top 0.70. Or no, point, uh, 0.65. So I'm going to drag it down and that changes the extrusion. Or I can change this little number manually. 0.65. So now this, two different widths. We've got one that's slightly thinner than the other. And now I need to duplicate this again. Surely there's got to be another way other than mirror. But for right now, I'm going to use that as my workaround. I'm going to select the upper body. And then I'm going to go to mirror again. I'm going to select this, it mirrors another piece, there we go, and then I'm going to take what I just made, so it should have two upper buddies, yep, there's the copied one, and I'm going to title this Cutaway, because in a second I'm going to use this piece to subtract away a space that I need to recess. On these cigar molds, the bottom half will have a recess cutaway into it, and the top half will have kind of an extrusion that fits into the cutaway. That way they stack together and kind of lock nice and tight. So let's see. I need to change the dimensions of this puppy to something that makes sense. I don't have my specs in front of me right now, so I'm just going to do it on the fly for this presentation. I don't want to scale it. I've already kind of learned scaling only works. It's like 100% and then either direction which isn't exactly what I want in this case. I want to be able to manually change by millimeters. That was called offset. Okay, offset face. So I'm going to offset this face on the side, I believe. And yep, that's it. I'm gonna drag it in. Yep, that'll do. I'm not being exact here, but I'm just giving you an idea of how I would create this. I'm going to select my offsets. And yes, you can manually enter them. So when I get my specs later, I should be able to get everything centered and good to go. A little bit more. And if the view kind of gets weird on you like it is now with me, I'm going to zoom out and then I'm going to use the shift key to realign and then I'm going to pinch zoom and zoom back in and it helps you get a, a cleaner perspective on what you're working with. Now to show you what I want to do, I only need this to be about tenth of an inch, maybe a little bit taller for me to cut it away properly, so I'm going to change the offset. What I want to do, this actually requires two pieces, one to cut away and one to merge, and they have to be slightly different sizes. So I'm going to take this piece right here that I've titled Cutaway, and I'm going to, I guess, use mirror again to duplicate it since I'm not quite sure if there's another way. Mirror, boom, I've duplicated it. Now I'm going to select my second cutaway that I just made and I'm going to title it Extrusion. I'm going to select that all together and now I'm going to move it out of my way. I'm going to make sure that I resize it though. So this one will be the cutaway 
and I need for the extrusion piece to be slightly smaller. And it has to be slightly smaller, not by a random value, but by a very specific dimension. Based on the plastic that I'm using, the settings on my printer and in my slicer, I know from experience that I need my cutaway to be 0.5 millimeters larger than the extrusion that's going to inset into it. So over here on the one that I have that's going to be my extrusion, I'm going to select the face and I'm going to see what the, it's 129.5, let me select this face and it's 121.99. So yeah, that's pretty damn close anyway. I'm going to do 122, and now they're exactly 0.5 millimeters. So this means this one is 0.5 millimeter smaller in this dimension. Now I need to change on this axis. So let's see, 119.37. And over here we've got one, okay, so, so I'm gonna do 119. Boom, and on this one, 119.50. Visually, I can't really tell, but we'll we'll leave that alone for now. And I'm gonna do what I need to do. In order for this to work for my purposes, I have to create two more of these rectangles, shrink them a bit, and then join them together. So this is something unique to cigar molds. Let me see if I can figure out how to do this. I'm gonna raise that, copy. So that was just doing mirror. And I actually figured this out a few seconds ago. You're seeing me do redo. <laughs> so I undid all the way back here. And now I'm just going to redo. So I copied that piece. Then I wanted to manipulate how big it was to create a tongue section. I sunk it down to where they were both level with each other. And I'm pulling it out. And I'm straightening these pieces to get them aligned just right. And then I did a copy. So now I've got two of these pieces. I no longer need this over here. So a few seconds, I'm going to delete that puppy. And now what I have to do is change the size just a little bit and align them. So as you can see, I've got a little extra space on the bottom. And now I need to get that same little extra space up. So I'm gonna select my extrusion piece. Let's drop it down and see if it fits snug as a bug in a rug. Zoom in and you can see, I want the bottom to be just a little bit bigger by 0.5 millimeter approximately all the way around. And the reason I'm doing that, I'm going to cut the bottom piece out of the bottom of the mold and I'm going to join this piece to the top of the mold. So it creates an extrusion on the underside of this piece right here and a recess on the other piece. And so it looks like we're pretty much there. And this is some wasted space right here. I think I'm gonna get rid of that. Let's see if I've got them aligned the way I want to. That certainly looks interesting back there. So they're not centered the way I want them to be. I'm going to select the upper body, the extrusion. I'm going to raise it a little bit. And then what I want to do is an alignment. And I've kind of figured this out. To do an alignment, I select the item that I want to align. I select the align tool. And then I've got to select the face I want to align. There's my center point. And I'm going to connect it to the center point on this object below it so that it will pull into center alignment with it. Boink. And now you can see that fixed the end so that the bottom is poking out just a little over the edge. Oops. I lost my view. I'm going to go ahead and click done. Had to do a quick search on the Shaper 3D website. If you ever lose sight of your object like I have, you can click on this little square up in the corner, double click, and it brings you back to a close view of your project. And these are now ready, but I need to change their placement. So I'm gonna grab both of the extrusion and the cutaway, and then I need to change their position slightly. So I'm gonna grab them. So I'm gonna go ahead and roll with that. And what I'm going to do now, 
Let's grab the other piece over there, the upper body, and I want to move that back over here. I want to, there we go. Now I need to center them. I'm going to take the center point on that one, and I'm going to try to align it to the center point on the bottom face of the other one. So let's select the upper body. Let's go to align, select the lower face, center. All right. So that centered them, even though it pulled it to the bottom. And what I can do now, I'm going to click done, and then I'm going to select the upper body, and I'm going to drag it upwards back to where I wanted it. Because they're aligned properly now, I just need to put them where they need to be. And so you can kind of see what I'm going to be building right now. Put the extrusion piece, move it upward. I want it to intersect these two slightly so I can join them together. So that's almost done. Now let's cut away. So I'm going to go to the cutaway. I'm going to sink it down. And I was having kind of this problem earlier because it's snapping too and I need to sink it down further. And I'm going to have to figure out how to do that exactly because it's not going flush exactly like I want it to. In any case, for the purposes of this tutorial, I will just go ahead and cut these away so you can see. So I'm going to do my cutaway first. And to do that, I'm going to select the lower body. Then I'm going to go to subtract. And I'm going to select the cutaway. And you can see what it's going to do. It's going to leave that part cut away. I'm going to say done. And now we've got the lower part. Oh, and I can see they weren't totally even because we've got a little bit of an uneven plane here. So I might need to go in and fix that uh, for my later on part and get those completely even with each other. Still haven't figured everything out yet. But all right, so now I want to join the extrusion with the top. So I'm going to do extrusion, and let's do upper body, and there is a union option. And I'm not sure if this is the best way to join objects, because they're still technically separated. Like, you can see I can select everything separately still, but they move around, and you can see it condense them into one object. But that's that. And then, you can see they kind of fit together like a glove. And the last part is I need to cut off this tongue because I no longer need it, which to do that, I would typically create a shape and subtract it. I think I can do that here just by doing a, let's see, upper body. Let's duplicate it real quick, which again, I only know how to do that via mirror at the moment. So I'm going to roll with what I can do. And I've got upper body number one that I can select. Watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to take this puppy right over to the face. I'm going to sink it down to where it cuts off that. Let's change that because I want it to be bigger and I want it to leave no mistakes. So I'm going to do that and then I'm going to drag that out. It looks a little bit ridiculous, but you'll see why in a second. I want it to smoothly cut away the entire face of this cigar mold. And I'm even going to take the upper body and lower body. I'm going to move them into the center. There we go. So this is, I mean, what I'm doing right now, the manipulations I'm doing are very similar to the way I would do that in Morphe. And if somebody has a better way and I'm like going the kindergarten stupid way, please feel free to let me know in the comments. I'm always open and open to learning. This whole 3D design was kind of flying by the seat of my pants when I first got started. So I'm going to select that upper body and I'm going to drag over just a little. Hopefully that'll do. Now let's do a subtract. So select the upper body and the lower body and subtract. All right, so that kind of did what I wanted. And you can see it made these two things totally equal. And that's how the front of my cigar mold will meet. Hopefully this is now an object I can select on its own. Let's delete. And there we go. I've got one cigar mold template. What I have to do now would be to put my bolt holes in it, which would probably be a matter of making cylinders. Let's see. I'm going to take these two pieces. 
lower them. Surely there's got to be a snap to grid or some kind of function like that so I don't end up going below the grid, but I'll figure all that out later. Now I'm going to make cylinders and hexagonal recesses. So I'm going to go over to the sketch menu and I'm going to click circle and I assume I just click down on the grid and yep, it's starting to draw a circle. Now I know from memory how big I need this to be, so it looks like I'm going to have to enter that manually in order for a quarter inch bolt to pass through with a little bit of wiggle so it doesn't scratch the edges every time someone pushes it through needs to be a 0.30 inches. Let's exit sketching and let me see if I can extrude that into a cylinder. Yep. So I select the top face of that circle, drag upward, boom. Now I've got a bolt. Now let's see how I change diameter. I bet I select Yep, I selected the main tube. So when I select the face, it's kind of counterintuitive, but I'll get used to it. The face where I drag up and down shows me the dimension of height, whereas this right here shows me the dimension of width. And it's 0.28, so it's very close. I'm going to do 0 0.30. And now that's the diameter of my circle. Perfect. Now I need to do a hexagon. How do I do that? Oh, polygon, and it's already set to hexagon. I bet this is like Adobe if I click and hold or maybe right click. Yep, we get different polygon options. But I'll leave it on hexagon, so let me select that. Probably the same deal. Yep, there we go. And it looks like it's allowing me to rotate it and it's kind of snapping to the grid. So I'm going to do, this is the orientation I'd need. And it needs to be, exit the sketch. Select the top face, drag it up to give it some height, and I know it needs to also be 0.3 in that dimension. That should do the trick. So let's do an alignment. I'm going to select a one face, then I'm going to do an align, and I'm going to align the center of that to the center of that, and there we go. Looks like a little hex bolt. There's still a little bit I haven't figured out here. It's kind of confusing, but as long as I'm able to work and produce something that works, that's all I care about. Let's select that. Let's move that over. All right. So now I need to copy this puppy because I make four bolt holes and I need to make four of these and align them. So I'm going to select my hex bolt punch, which is that entire object. So let's do mirror. Select that. Yeah, that's... That's not what I want. There's got to be a better way other than mirror to accomplish what I want to do. So I'm going to go do a Google search real quick. Shaper. Copying bodies. So I'm going to sit through this video and I'll be right back. It's actually a lot easier than I was making it. You select the body over here. So I'm going to select my hex bolt and then we get these controls. It's literally a copy function. As soon as you click copy and it becomes blue and it's activated. Now when you drag over, you get a duplicate of the object. So I'm going to place that and I'm going to click away, deselect all. And now I've got two objects. I bet you I can do that same thing with both of those selected. So now I've got hex bolt, hex bolt punch and hex bolt punch one, and I'm gonna retitle that hex bolt punch two. And now let's highlight both of them, and I'm gonna do the same thing. And I betcha, yep, I copied both at the same time. So now I'm going to click away, deselect, and I've got my four bolts. So let's retitle those. I'm gonna do hex bolt punch three and hex bolt punch four. Now I'm gonna select all of them and move them as a group. And I'm going to change the position of two of them. And let's move those further out to the side. As of right now, my only immediate problem is how to perfectly align all four of those. And I'll figure that out uh, here in the next week or two. To give you an idea of what I'm going to do, I'm going to take the lower body and the upper body, select them both at the same time, drag them up. So now I'm going to just select the lower body, move it down a bit. Let's make sure all my holes are in alignment and you can see 
It's kind of eating into the lip, so I need to change the position of these slightly. So I'm going to move them slightly in. To do that, I select bolt hole punch one and bolt hole punch three. Let's move those in to where they're no longer hitting the sides. I'm going to select them individually. Move that slightly that way. Select bolt hole punch three. Move it slightly that way. And then let's take a look on the inside and make sure they have cleared. Yep, that's the main thing I wanted. I wanted clearance so that it didn't touch that side lip. Just giving it a casual look around. Looks like that's going to be how I want it. So now I need to do a subtract function. And I'm going to try to subtract all of those at the same time. There we go. So that looks like it's going to do what I want it to do. I'm going to hit done. Boom, it punched a hole through both of my cigar halves. It left a hexagonal recess. And that's all, folks. That's the basic creation of a Canagar Tools Canagar mold. Well, it's looking like this software might be completely viable as a replacement for Morphe. Time will tell in the next couple weeks if I can get used to it and get to the point where I can work just as fast as I was able in Morphe. But I hope this helps you guys. Uh, there's lots of different software out there that you can try, but so far out of all the ones that I've tried, very, very solid. So the last step would be to change this into a 3D printable file. So now I'm going to try to figure out how to export this file. Go to File, Export, and there we go. Yeah, 3D print, export for a slicer, click Next, Standard Triangle Language. I'm not familiar with 3MF, so I'm going to do STL, the standard format, and stay with STL. So let's give it a name, Cigar Mold Template. Resolution, I'm going to say high, although it says that's for pro only. That is one major difference, guys. Morphe was 10 bucks, and then you just had access to it. This is a monthly cost, and probably a little bit more expensive than Morphe, and a little bit more professional. I'm going to just keep it the way it is. I'm not, I'm not familiar with these kind of STL export settings. You can't export until you've either started a free trial, or you've started your... Looks like $39 a month or $2.99 a year. So I'm going to have to sign up for a subscription, then I'll be able to export. Thank you for sticking around with me to the end of this video. If you stuck around this long, I'm going to go ahead and assume you're probably already subscribed. But if you're not, please smash that subscribe button for me. It helps me keep making these videos. Thank you very much. If you have your own favorite 3D software, please let me know down in the comments. Onward and upward, everybody.